Okay, welcome back and welcome back to Daniel chapter 12 and Matthew chapter 24. This is what theologians call eschatology, the study of the end times. And beware of anybody who says they have it all figured out. Uh, you know, prophecy is like a puzzle, and honestly, it does fit together. When you look at Daniel's prophecy, you can find similar stuff in the book of Revelation, of course, in the Olivet Discourse that we're studying right now. But I've never met anybody, including myself, who has it all figured out. I could ask a hundred questions that nobody has an answer for. I take a little bit of solace here from what uh, the angel told Daniel in Daniel chapter 12, right at the very end of his book. Um, he, he said in verse number 9 of, of Daniel chapter 12, go your your way, Daniel, for these words are concealed and sealed up until the end time. And so that means, you know, for sure, nobody's going to fully understand this until the end time. It also gives us, you know, indication that we are reading about the end time here. Uh, and I want to establish that very clearly before we go back into Matthew. So we already read last time the very first verse uh, of Daniel chapter 12 about that great distress that, that the, the, the angel said, you know, unprecedented distress confirmed by what the Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24. And, uh, and, and to confirm that there's no doubt that we're talking about the final days of the earth. Uh, verse number two. Uh, well, let, let's read the last half of verse number one again. At, at that time, your people, everyone who is found written in the book, will be rescued. Rescued from what? Rescued from that time of distress that is unprecedented, okay? And so there is some hope at the end of a rescue. And I would uh, tend to believe that's a reference to the rapture of the church, and then which is followed immediately by the resurrection of the righteous. Why am I thinking that? Because the next verse uh, basically says that. In verse number two, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake these to everlasting life, okay? And so Paul makes it very clear in one of his epistles that at the rapture of the church, you know, those who are dead in Christ will rise first, and then we who are alive at his coming will be second to, 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 to rise to meet him in the air, all right? And so there's a reference to the resurrection of the righteous, to everlasting life, but the others to disgrace and everlasting contempt. There will be a resurrection of the righteous and the wicked, and the book of Revelation makes it clear that those don't happen at the same time. They're actually split up by a thousand years. Verse number three, and those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven, and those who lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But as for you, Daniel, conceal these words and seal up the book until the end of time. Many will go back and forth and knowledge will increase. Well, good goodness, uh, transportation has certainly, uh, you know, changed exponentially over the last hundred years in, in history and knowledge. Wow, has knowledge increased? Well, just check out, uh, you know, the internet and you can see that knowledge is certainly increasing. We're getting close to that time. Now, we're going to go back to Matthew's gospel, back to Matthew chapter 24, because I think we've established that that time of distress, although there was a time of distress in 70 AD and the, the, the Holocaust in Jerusalem then and, the, and, and Jerusalem's siege by Titus and the Roman legions has some foreshadowing of the, you know, the, the time when the Antichrist will set up the abomination of desolation in the holy place. Still, I think at this point in time in Matthew 24, we're reading about the end times, okay? And so this has relevancy to me and to you. We could live to see this. And I think it's dangerous when certain folks teach that all of this has all occurred, well, you know, before 70 AD, it was fulfilled at that time, and it has no relevancy to modern day Christians at all. I think that's dangerous because I think then we're not going to be thinking about these things and prepared for these things, okay? So uh, I don't want to be in that category, all right? Uh, so, so 
look at uh, what Jesus said now in verse number 21. We'll pick up there again and keep on reading this time of Matthew 24. For then there will be a great tribulation, such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. This is the final tribulation, and it's, you know, immense. Verse number 22, unless those days had been cut short, no life would have been saved. So what, what does that indicate? That means a lot of life will not be saved. There's going to be death, 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 and destruction. And there'll be many martyrs made of, uh, of, of those who are followers of Christ at that time, even though there was a rescue coming at the those who make it to the end and live to the rapture of the church and to see the return of Christ, they'll be rescued. There's going to be many who are going to lose their lives. Uh, but those days will be cut short, Jesus promised, if it, if it had not been that way, no life would have been saved. See, this can't be talking about uh, the Holocaust in 70 AD. This is much bigger than that. That was regional. This is no life. That sounds to me like no life on the earth. No life. That's what it says. Okay, no life would have been saved. But, he says, for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. And so there will be some of the elect, those who are believers in Jesus Christ and his followers, who will make it to the end and they'll be saved. You know, that's obviously why uh, Jesus told his followers, when you see the abomination of desolation, flee. Why? Because you're fleeing for your life. You're trying, you know, doing your best to preserve your life. If you don't listen to him, if you don't flee, then you could be caught and you could be then killed. Right? Now, that's not such a bad thing if you're a believer in Christ because, you know, then you go to be with the Lord and, and uh, live happily ever after. Uh, but there is a desire to keep living, and we're going to talk about that next time, uh, what we can and should do during that time if we happen to be alive. And is there any possibility that we'll be alive? Or will we all be gone before that, taken up in the rapture? Mm, interesting stuff. And I'll see you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.